We're talking about nomenclature. We've gone over ionic compounds and binary molecular compounds, and now we're going to talk about acids. There are many definitions of acids. Uh, the one we're going to use as kind of a working definition is that acids are molecular compounds that release hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. Sometimes we can slip into the trap of thinking that acids are ionic compounds, but they're not. They're molecular compounds. But when you put them in water, they make ions, and that's why it gets a little confusing. They get their own set of nomenclature rules. So acids are composed of hydrogen, which is generally written first in the formula, and then one or more nonmetals, and those are written first. So this convention allows us to easily recognize acids from their formulas, because if it starts with H, it's an acid. When we take something like HCl, um, HCl in the gas is a gas at room temperature. As a pure substance, it would be named hydrogen chloride. It's a molecular compound between two nonmetals. But when we dissolve it in water, it forms hydrogen ions and chloride ions. And here when we have AQ in parentheses, Afterwards, that means it's dissolved in water. The compound is not considered an acid if it is not dissolved in water. Then it's considered a molecular compound. So some of these guys have two different names, depending on whether they're dissolved in water or not. We should be familiar with the general characteristics of acids. They taste sour. Um, how many of you guys like Sour Patch Kids? Hey, most of you. I just like, they make my mouth pucker. I'm like, why would you put that in your mouth? But a lot of people love Sour Patch Kids. What makes them sour? They're covered in acid. Oh, <gasps> there's chemicals in your favorite candy. Yeah, all your favorite, anything you eat is full of chemicals. It's okay. It's not a dangerous acid, but acids taste sour like Sour Patch Kids, right? Acids will dissolve many metals, but not all metals. Um, formulas generally start with an H. Here's um, an illustration of, what is that, zinc reacting with hydrochloric acid and making hydrogen gas bubbles. Um, there are two basic kinds of acids. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, that's funny to a chemist, two basic kinds of acids, because bases are the opposites of acids. Just, there are two kinds of acids. Um, and that affects how we name them. So there are binary acids and oxy acids. Your book uses the term binary, and that works for most of that group, but it doesn't work for one of them. And so I tend to think of them as oxy acids and the other kind. Oxy acids have hydrogen, like all acids do, and then they have an oxy anion. So if you take an oxyanion, phosphate, sulfate, nitrite, something like that, and you put hydrogen on it, you get an oxy acid. Naming the binary acids, the not oxy acids, follows this pattern. Hydro, the name, the base name of the nonmetal with the ending changed to ic, a little space, and then the word acid. So hydro is the prefix. You follow it with the name and you have the word acid at the end. So let's practice that. HF, is there any oxygen in that? No. It is not an oxy acid. So it's a binary acid. So we're going to use the prefix hydro. Hydro. And then the other element is fluorine. So we change fluorine to fluoric hydrofluoric acid. Acids are easy to recognize from their names because the second word is acid. Um, technically, we should have a Q in here. I'm not going to try to trick you on that, but I do want you to understand that if it's not dissolved in water, it's not an acid. But when it says name the acid, I think it's fairly safe to assume that it is dissolved in water. What would the name of this guy be? H2S. Hydrosulfuric acid. Hydro 
hydrosulfuric acid. We can only use the prefix hydro when there's no oxygen. Any questions about those guys? We're going to get lots of practice in lab this afternoon, this evening. And yeah, it's already past afternoon. Oxy acids. Oxy acids have oxygen in them. And then oxy anion. And the name of the oxy acid is based on the name of the oxy anion. So we look at the ion name. If it ends in eight, we're going to change the ending to ick. If it ends in it, we'll change the ending to us. And then we're going to put the word acid after that. Um, so I need to give you my silly sentence, mnemonic for that, because it's one of those things where you've got it and eight, it and us, and how do you remember which ones go together? So my sentence is, Rick ate him before he could bite us. And, you know, no, I'm, I'm not really talking about cannibalism here. Rick ate him before. Four. I'm going to run out of room. He could bite us. So how does that help? Ite and us are a pair. Ick and eight. Rick, eight. So if it ends in eight, you change it to ick. If it ends in it, you change it to us. Let's do a couple examples. Name these as oxy acids. So we look at the acid. We recognize it as an acid because it starts with H. There's oxygen in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to look and see what is the name of the anion. ClO3. What is that? That's chlorate. That's the chlorate ion. So we take the ending off and we change it to ick. Rick eight. Ick and eight go together. So this is chloric acid. What number two? Acetic acid. Because this part here is acetate. That's acetate ion. We change eight to ick, and we got, we got, we've got, we get acetic acid. And that is the acid that's present in vinegar. And the smell of vinegar is due to the acetic acid. Any questions? So that's naming them. Writing formulas is going the other direction. So anytime we see the name of a compound that ends in acid, we know that the formula is going to start with an H. Writing the formulas, we think about them as if they were ionic, even though we know that it is molecular. So if the prefix, if the name starts with hydro, we, need, we know it's a, a binary acid. If there's no prefix, it's an oxy acid. For the oxy acids, we do the reverse of the Rick ate him so he could bite us thing. If it's ick, we change it back to eight so that we know what, what the polyatomic ion is. And if it's us, we change the ending to ite to find out what that polyatomic ion is. So hydrocyanic acid. What does the prefix hydro tell us? It's classified as a binary acid. There's no oxygen. So cyanic. That is from cyanide, which is CN minus. This is the one that violates that idea of a binary acid. It's not an oxy acid, but it's not exactly binary, is it? Because we got CN that already has two elements in it and then it will be combined with hydrogen ion. And to figure out what the formula, what the ratio is, we think of it as if it were ionic, even though it isn't. 
Cyanide ion has a negative one charge, and so it must be paired up with one hydrogen ion. And so cyanic acid is H, sorry, hydrocyanic acid is HCN. And then a really nice touch would be to put AQ on there, just to be clear. Phosphoric acid. Is this an oxyanion? I mean, is this an oxy acid or the other kind? This oxy acid, because it doesn't start with the um, hydro. So, ick, is this from phosphate or phosphite? Phosphate. So, we need the formula for phosphate ion. What's that? PO4, and what's the charge? Three minus. And so that's going to combine with hydrogen ion. Because hydrogen ion is plus one, the charge on the anion just tells us how many we need. And so this is H3PO4. And that's also aqueous. How about this one? Hypochlorous acid. Now, hypo is similar to hydro, but it's not the same. This is an oxy acid, right? Hypochlorous comes from hypochlorite. And the formula for hypochlorite is what? ClO minus. Chlorate is ClO3 minus. Chlorite is the light version, ClO2, and hypochlorite is one less, it's ClO minus. Combine that with H plus and we get H C yeah. ClO. Aqueous because it's an acid. Any questions? Acid rain is a problem. We get a couple of pictures here that show some of the results of acid rain. Uh, trees don't like it when there's sulfuric acid in their, in the water that comes down on them. Um, marble statues don't like it either. We can see this one is apparently gets uh, wetter than this other one, and you know it's just features are just being completely eaten off. And this happens because there's there are compounds that are gases. These are molecular compounds. When mixed with water, they can form acids. And so when we have these gases in the atmosphere, they can react with moisture in the air and form acids, which get into the rain. And they come down, and it's not good for the plants.